Hey, what's going on YouTube? Everyday guy here, back with another video. Um, I got my tooth saws out today. Um, this is a new saw I got off of uh, eBay recently. Uh, it's really nice, actually. It's, I believe, I know it's a home light because it says it on there. It's an XL101. That's the model, I believe. Not the model, that's the model number. I'm talking about. The model, that's the model number for the, the bar. Model number for this is right there. That's, I guess that's just the type of saw. Because they make other versions. They make the XL12, the XL103, and 4. This is, I believe, is the first one they made. They made the, XO, the XL101s from 1967, and they were discontinued in the 70s. I believe 1970s when they stopped making them. It's a very unique saw. It, uh, I believe this one's a 1967. It might be a 68. There's a little difference, not much. The plastic in the, it shows, I think it's maybe a 68 because a 67 had metal, or sorry, a rubber, uh, button for the oiler. And yeah, I don't, that's why, I, the one reason why I brought this saw here to show you the difference. This is a current day saw. Here's a difference. They're both an 18 inch, 18 inch bar. Um, Sorry, yeah. They're both an 18 inch bar. Um, maybe that might be a 16. I don't know. Well, here you go. Here's here's a difference. So, this is a current day saw. These are, don't really have a choke. Well, they do, but it's not the same as a, an old school choke. Probably wondering what this is and why that doesn't have one. Well, back in the day, it wasn't, they weren't really worried about safety and you know, chainsaws were basically new around that time, so they didn't really know what would happen or things that could happen. So safety really wasn't a thing back then. Even with the cars, like this car, there really wasn't any safety. Like the seat belts are bucket, they're, they're bucket seats. There's no airbags. Really, it's back then it was more about comfort. Well, let me show you the difference. This is called a bar brake. Notice how the chain moves when it's when it's pulled back. Chain moves, right? Well, what it's for is if you're cutting and a chainsaw decides to kick back, your hand will do that and it will lock the chain so it doesn't come back and cut you in half or cut your arm or hurt you. So it locks it where it doesn't move. So if I pull it back, it'll free it and it'll move. This saw doesn't have that. It doesn't even have a place for one. It's just you put your hand here and you, you hope to God nothing happens. It moves freely all the time. There is no stopping this chain. So if it's running, the only thing you got to shut it off is a kill switch, which is kind of handy how it's right here. So if something does happen, you can flip that off. But it still it doesn't stop the chain enough in time because this is heavy. This is a heavy chain and this thing is moving all the time. Like when I shut it off, it's still doing that all right so another thing is these things are heavy they say it's the world lightest saw but back then back then this was considered light because it's you know steel but it's really it's it's about 13 pounds maybe 11 i think it's 11 pounds 11 and a half or it's 11 i think it's 11 pounds um also another thing you heard me talking about this earlier, this little thing. What it is, is it's an oiler for your chain. Newer saws have an automatic oil system. It's got a little pump in there that basically when the chainsaw's running, it, this that's spinning, it causes this to spin and it pumps oil. You put your oil here and it shoots it onto the chain. It comes out at one of these holes and it spits it onto the bar. It keeps it lubed so it doesn't, you know, get seized up or doesn't you know lock itself back then you had to do it manually you had to pump it i'll show you where it'll come out at see it right there coming out the little blue stuff i put husqvarna oil in here to kind of help it get oil it you can probably see it now yeah there it goes you can see it oil in the chain that's just to keep it from locking itself and if you forget to mash that it's going to seize up and probably throw sparks 
This thing is awesome. I love it. It's uh, if you want clarification again, it's a nineteen uh probably a sixty eight. It's a nineteen sixty eight home light XL one oh one. It's a pretty cool saw. Uh I got it off eBay for about two hundred and sixty bucks plus tax, so it's about three hundred. But uh it was in great condition. The only problem I have with it is it's leak gas it leak he said at least gas or around in here. This is a split tank, which means that it's it's two pieces into one, like they glue it or something or do something. You kind of see it right there. It's the tank is like it's put together. It's not like one whole thing. It's like in two. Right around in here is where it leaks, and it leaks really bad. Like it's it doesn't hold gas very long. That's why I brought this gas out here so when I start it, I can show you. Um, the carburetor is in really good condition. Um, it's it's not that bad. Like it starts up pretty quick. I mean it's. For something that's over 50 something years old, I'm honestly kind of impressed. Now, it probably needs a new air filter pretty soon because it's kind of dirty, but it's not too bad. It's not like dry rot and everything. Like, it's all there. Carburetor's pretty clean. The inside's pretty clean, too. Yeah, I might need to get a new air filter soon, but uh, yeah, it's, it's all here. $260 worth. Now, most people. Um, when they buy a saw, they get one that's broken to restore it. Well, I bought this one just to play around with because I actually bought another saw, a Homelite XL12 that I bought to restore my old bow saw that I have under the barn. Um, I bought that to restore it and, you know, put stuff on it to make it better and to run better. Basically to make it new. I'm going to paint it. I ordered some uh, Homelite, uh, spray paint. Or sorry, home light paint. I bought some off of a website. I got the the color combinations and everything. I got a new spark plug for it. I got a new pulley system because the system that's in it is all warped and messed up. So I got a new pulley for it. Um, this one's probably going to need one soon because the sound it makes. That little screech noise it is probably it's probably going to need it. This one's probably going to need one too. Um, I had I got a new. For the other one, I got a new oiler because the seals in it are all shot. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But, uh, yeah, there's pretty much just a difference between saws like 50, 60 years ago from once a day. Once a day are just cheaper and plastic. These were metal, and these things were loud. Let me show you something. This thing has a muffler, an actual muffler on the front. That whole thing is a muffler. <laughs> <laughs> on this thing that's all you got and actually you can see the piston i don't know if you can see it but it's it's like right there when this thing is running you can see the piston right there moving back and forth that's all you got this thing is loud like it's it's unrealistically loud like if somebody was standing over there on the other side i'm pretty sure after a while they would go deaf because of how loud it is the gas, the gas tank is in pretty good condition i don't i haven't found any rust or any, anything in there besides the leak that's about it but uh yeah, the cap's in decent condition. Everything. This is the original cap. Uh, this does take uh, 32 ratio oil. Or, I don't know how to say it. It's complicated. They all take... That one takes 40 to 1 ratio. Four, sorry, 50 to 1 ratio. My Black Max takes 40 to 1. This one takes 32 to 1. That's like a thicker oil. 32 to 1 oil is very difficult to find. It is complicated. I had to go on a special website to have it ordered, and it cost me about 50 bucks to buy that freaking oil. If anybody out there has got any clues on where I can find one cheaper, please let me know, because I need oil to keep this running. Uh, it's expensive, but since at least gas, I'm spending a lot of money on tanks. So this uh, I mix my own fuel. I just got one of these, and I just threw some gas in there, because it's just quicker to carry something like this than carrying a whole jug, so I keep one of these around with me. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a quick startup for y'all, and uh, that'll that'll be it for today. I can't run around because it's loud and there's people out there hunting, so I gotta be kind of kind of quick with it. Got I'm gonna do a full choke right there. I'm gonna do a full setup. You got your throttle right here. You can mash and kind of help it start up quicker. That's just an option. It hasn't been running in about a couple hours, so it that's pretty good right there. Probably out of fuel. 
Bonnie, I'll throw some in there real quick. Be right back. She's got fuel, so it's probably just cold. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the home light. Uh, it's pretty nice. I love it. It's just too loud. Like, it's way too loud. Like, early in the morning or late at night, you can't use it because of how loud it is. Like, I'm pretty sure I had people pissed off before <laughs> when I was running this thing. Because right over there, there's a house right there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there. And people are kind of a-holes over there. But, uh. Yeah, that's the Home Light X101 XL. Uh, I'll probably do another video of it later. Maybe not now because I got to get ready to go somewhere. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the XL. And I'll I'll see you guys in another video.